We are in the Columbia River Gorge, which is a national scenic area. We're approximately 35 miles east of Vancouver on Highway 14. The highway runs right through the park from Vancouver, just head out to milepost 35. You'll be at the park. If you're coming from Oregon or from the east, we've got Bridge of the Gods is about six miles down. And from Oregon, you'd cross Bridge of the Gods and then head west to the park about six, seven miles. We've got the rock itself, which is an iconic part of Washington State Parks. And we've got a trail that goes to the top that's just incredible. This was the park I wanted to work at. I first actually came to this area after I had applied to become a park ranger. And I remember I was driving east on Highway 14 and I got to Cape Horn, which is about 10 miles west of here. And I looked out across and I could see Beacon Rock in the distance and I was like, wow. This place is so spectacular and beautiful. I really would love to work here and live here. You know, it took me a few years to get here, but it's a really, really special place. There's a lot of reasons why people come out to Beacon Rock. That's one of the, the draws of this park is that you can do so many different things. There's almost 5,000 acres here to explore. We're up here on Hamilton Mountain. That's about a four mile hike back here. We've gained about 2,000 feet of elevation to get up here. And so you'll want to bring water, some snacks, some food along. Make sure that you're prepared for a hike like this. We don't recommend this one for the beginning hiker. This is more an advanced hike up here on Hamilton Mountain. But once you get here, you are rewarded with some fantastic views of the Columbia River Gorge, Oregon, Bonneville Dam, the solitude, peace, quiet, beautiful wildflowers, spectacular geologic features, wildlife abounding. It's a wonderful place. At the turn of the century, Henry Biddle purchased the land that is now the rock and around the rock. And his sole purpose for purchasing that land was to build a trail to the top. It was a goal of his. He thought it would be an engineering wonder to get to the top, and he did it. He started in 1915. It took him three years to build the trail to the top. And when he was done, his heirs in 1935 sold the land to the state to make it into a state park. Beacon Rock itself is the middle of an old volcano which is about 850 feet high. This is the most popular feature of the park. In fact, more popular by far than anywhere else. About 40 to 50,000 people a year come up here and hike to the top. When you're driving up and you're looking at the rock, it might look a little imposing, and that's because it's got some sheer vertical sides, but you'll find it's an easy, less than a mile long hike. Nice, moderate gradient from bottom to top. We've got 52 switchbacks from bottom to top. And if you take your time and enjoy the views, you'll enjoy the hike to the top of Beacon Rock. We also have the group camp, two large fields, many picnic tables, two fire rings, an enclosed kitchen shelter with water and power, covered picnic shelter. There's two pit toilets, running water, and then two Adirondack shelters with bunks that are real popular with kids for staying overnight. Most folks that use this area are here to day hike, but we also have two campsites that are designated for equestrian use. This chimney is thought to be the remnants of a hunter or trapper's cabin from the 1800s. It's a great place to recreate in the summer. We've got a full marina with electrical hookups for boats for people to spend the night on their boats. We've got a boat launch. We've got a one mile interpretive trail that people enjoy going around and learning about the Native Americans that lived in the area, Lewis and Clark, that traveled through here, a little bit about the geology of the area. There's a lot for all sorts of different interests down here along this trail. We've got 33 campsites. Two of them are right next to our moorage area, so right on the Columbia River. And we've also got five RV spots that are down just off of Highway 14. We have a stamp program. We're part of the uh, Lewis and Clark Historic Trail. And so people come through and there's a passport program where they can get their, their, their um, passport stamped and it shows the various parks they've visited along the trail. So we get people who are interested in the Three Seas program because we had the Civilian Conservation Corps here from the 1930s, which really built a lot of our park. And there are people that, you know, that's their passion is to follow the work of that group and what they accomplished during a tough time in our nation's history. They built the road going up to this area, parking areas, the picnic areas, 
uh, the shelters and the campground all in this area of the park. They also built an amazing dry stack retaining wall that goes alongside the road protecting it from rocks falling on it. The park's beautiful year-round, like the changing of the leaves in the fall to, you know, the snow is very peaceful and beautiful in the winter, to wildflowers in May, June, July. It's a beautiful place to come year-round. Hi. This park is a great opportunity to just sit in nature and be quiet. And if you sit there for a few minutes, the birds will start chirping, a squirrel will run by, you might see a deer. If you're just quiet and you let your senses absorb the place that you're in, it's a unique experience.